All right, so today I'm going to be talking about imprinting in ducklings, um, specifically ducklings because the bird population itself, imprinting is very prevalent, in, and then the duck species is the most common and the strongest with the imprinting um, reflex. So what is imprinting? Imprinting is rapid learning that occurs after birth, or in this case, since we're going to be talking about ducks hatching, and it's a period that establishes long-lasting behavior responses, and it can be to an object or to an individual. Most commonly, it's an individual. And what we're going to look at a little clip to see an example. Hey, I'm Ralphie Aversa, and this is Trending Now. The unique ability that birds have, in particular ducks, defined as imprinting, can make them one of the most natural animal companions to humans, but can also be the most unexpected kids to the unlikeliest of all parents. Meet the mother of 13 adorable ducklings, a man who rescued the duck eggs when the mom was killed. He placed the eggs in an incubator, and once they hatched, the first largest creature they saw was him, therefore causing an immediate attachment. Oh, they can leave them for a good long time, and once they've once they've started to grow. Yeah, they say you can leave them for a day. The young ducklings are very synchronized as they follow along. Doesn't look like they will be taking their eyes off their new mother anytime soon. They have his hands full with more than just feathers. A YouTuber asks, "How do you take care of a duckling? How about thirteen of them?" Hope he figures out a way in the meat. So I just wanted to do that as a little example um, of what to see when imprinting happens with a duck on a human itself. Um, so how it works, ducks are especially important because they imprint not only on their parents, but also on their siblings. So that's why um, the imprinting reflex and response is so much stronger with ducks. Um, and it's controlled by a sensitive period, which is a time that an animal is really receptive to environmental experiences. Um, in ducks, the natural sensitive period is 13 to 16 hours when they're hatched and in the presence of their duckling siblings. However, if a duck is isolated, that period can be extended up to 20 hours. Um, in the sensitive period, it's caused by the T3 hormone. Um, so the role that T3 plays, obviously, is the thyroid hormone. Um, so T3 accumulates six days before hatching, and it peaks around the time of hatching. So that's why ducklings are so sensitive um, to imprinting right around the time of hatching. It decreases to background levels at five days after hatching. So although it is present for up to five days, imprinting is the strongest when T3 is the most um, prevalent. So the closer to hatching, the more likely it is that a duck is going to imprint. Um, also, the addition of exogenous T3 can extend a sensitive period. So in a lot of research, um, researchers have um, given the ducklings exogenous T3 just to track how long can they actually cause the sensitive period to last. Um, now I want to talk about the scenarios of imprinting and they can get kind of complicated so hopefully I can break it down for you guys and get you to understand a little bit. This is the natural scenario so that means a duckling is hatched, it's in the same environment as its siblings and it's also with its duckling mother. Um, so the duckling hatches and it sees the duck which is its mother duck. So it processes the first thing that it sees, it recognizes that's what I am as well. Um, and so a mom, the mom is the duck, the mom is what's taking care of them. It also sees its ducklings that are hatching around them or that have already hatched. And so it recognizes, oh, I am like my mother and I am like my siblings. So as they grow, all the ducks love mom, mom's tending to them. They grow to be ducks. And because they're in the natural, the natural scenario where they're learning and getting their natural reflexes, their natural responses, um, they don't need mom once they've grown. So because they were in the presence of other ducks, they like other ducks, they will mate with other ducks, and mom to them is just another duck, one that provided them care when they grow up, but now they don't need her anymore. The next scenario is when a duck is raised by a human, but is still in the presence of its other duckling siblings. So the duckling hatches, it sees a human, and so it registers at first, okay, I'm a human, because the first person and the person that's taking care of me is a human. However, because it's in the presence of its other duckling siblings, it also registers that, hey, I could also look like them. So although mom is taking care of them and the ducklings are receiving their care from a human, when they grow to be ducks, they have had their natural responses influenced by their duckling siblings. And so they realize that they don't need mom, 
and they like other ducks and they will mate with other ducks. So that opens a scenario that the duck may still like mom or it may connect with its own population enough that it doesn't really love mom anymore, it's fine on its own. Um, the most common when talking about imprinting scenario that we see is a human only. So this is where the duck is in the presence of a single human and it has no siblings, it's isolated. So the duckling hatches and it sees a human, so it processes, oh, I'm a human too. And because the um, caretaker is a human, it responds that the person taking care of it um, is, like I said, is a human, so they themselves register as a human. They don't see other ducklings, so they have no other forces of pulling their natural responses out. Um, so as it grows, it loves and needs mom because it has no one of its own species taking care of it. So the, it grows up to be a duck, but it's never seen other ducks before. So it registers that it's a human and therefore likes humans. So if you put it with its own population, it will not mate with other ducks because it doesn't recognize that it itself is a duck. And in the end, the duck will love mom best and it will not detach. So I just put up this little funny comic because it was Garfield. And the um, duck hatches and it says mommy and Garfield's like really annoyed. It says, look kid, I'm not your mommy, I'm a boy. Boys can't be mommies. And the duck says, daddy. So Garfield just thinks that it's calling it mommy because you know, it thinks it's a female, when in all reality, it's seeing that that's the only person that it sees when it hatches. So it associates that that's its primary caretaker. Um, prevention, so obviously if you have to have, a, if you have to raise it um, with a human force, which often happens because of being abandoned by the mother, your first way to prevent any of this happening is to get it in the presence of its own species. So whether you can get it with ducklings that are around the same age, or you have um, an older duck that will take on the motherly role, that's great. However, a lot of times this is impossible. So if you are raising an isolated duckling as a human, there are a couple things you can do. One of them is they've made these robotic mother ducks. And so before the duckling hatches, they will put this robotic duck in the presence of the egg so that when the duckling hatches, they can start motorizing the robot. And so the duck sees that, oh, that's what I look like. And the robot looks enough like its own species that once it grows, it recognizes, hey, that's, it looks like what raised me. Therefore, I am like that species. I take a liking to that species and it will still mate with its own species. Um, another option, which is very common but a little bit odd, is feeding with duck puppets. So in this case, the keepers or the caretakers will kind of put a cloak over themselves and they'll put on like a little puppet. And in this picture, obviously, it's not the most representative of the species itself, but the better the puppet, the better this works. So a human will wear a cloak and they'll put on the glove and they'll do all of their caretaking with that glove on so that the duck registers, oh, that glove is what's taking care of me. And so if you get it to look a lot like its species, once it grows and matures, you can put it back in with members of its own species and it will mate and mature with them as well. And then those are my references.